Hey guys, I'm Daimir for Zero Club Gaming. Welcome to a new podcast. The subject of today, as the title says, is the paid mods for Steam. And I know I'm like now just, it's completely irrelevant to, well, almost completely irrelevant to even bring it up now because Steam has actually right now officially backed down for the moment from paid mods. So, yes, the outcry has worked. Bravo, fantastic, I hope you're proud of yourself. Honestly though, reading all of this stuff on these forums, on these forums about these people and their argumentation, it's almost like watching Fox News. It is such an emotional fueled pool of ignorance and misinformation and fear. It's ridiculous. But, relatively objectively, as much as I can at least, I'm going to tell you exactly why, what, what is bad, but because there are bad sides to this whole pa uh, paid modding stuff, but there's also so much that is just a non-argument. So let's get right into it. First of all, well, actually, maybe we should go, okay, let's go with the legit points, what is wrong with paid mods? What is legitly wrong with it? Here's the thing. These are the only things that, as far as I'm concerned, are valid. Number, well, number one. It is very difficult, when it comes to mods, to determine what or who actually made what. First of all, there's theft. You can go on the web, find a mod on some website about someone, upload it on Steamworks, claim it's yours, and sell it for money. And then hopefully get, you know, you, you, you do this probably with maybe a dummy account on Steam. Uh, you hopefully get quickly, get a bunch of people to buy it, which, although I have to say in the real world, that probably will never go that way. Let's get one thing straight here. In the real world, uh, especially on the internet, people quickly determine from each other who are legitimate uh, offerers of proper content and who just came around the corner with some extremely high quality mod out of nowhere. I think people will realize that is perhaps a bit fishy and especially if perhaps they could see the account that that is a dummy account just made, uh, who probably doesn't even own Skyrim, stuff like that. You might, you know, you might, people will probably catch on to this stuff relatively quickly in the real world. Uh, not to promote Pirate Bay in any way at all, but I do want to mention that I know that on there the system is kind of the same. You know, people do upload f um, uh, via torrents, uh, you know, viruses and stuff like that. But the way it works is that the community kind of knows who to trust and who not to trust. And newbies are usually not trusted. And there are these people who basically do, weirdly enough, nothing but upload. Uh, movies and whatever and you know they know they are trustworthy so those are the ones that always get um, downloaded and all the new stuff with maybe viruses whatever don't and that's how the community kind of sorts stuff out there and it's, I, I'm and in the real world as well people know kind of what are the good products and what are the bad products there's a big difference between a Lada and a BMW and everyone knows this right you know kind of what quality you get that's another thing people are afraid of an influx of shitty mods because people want to earn some money who cares you know welcome to the free market people can make products so what it doesn't overload the service or anything and people you know let them make their sword in their 3d program and upload it if anyone wants it then someone will buy it you're not forced to buy it just ignore it don't look for new mods look for high rated mods stuff like that it's not that difficult the market will sort that out just like it has with any other product in the real world but theft is a bit of an issue because again it's really hard to determine who made what what uh, maybe maybe you grabbed an asset from skyrim maybe you grabbed a sword from skyrim and gave it a reskin okay um is that allowed or do you have to completely from the ground up make a mod make something in in uh, in in some 3d program some completely unrelated 3d program you know that exists in the world that people use for 3d modeling do you have to do that before the mod is yours to sell um maybe you your mod is based on the groundworks of another mod right so who gets the money there so that is incredibly difficult to decide 
if something if someone is allowed to sell that mod because it's their property or maybe it's someone else's it's very that's difficult and again theft issue but that is basically the only legitimate issue so let's get get to one of the things that absolutely aggravate me to death as an argument as to why this would be a bad thing people who like to tell other people how they need to li re uh, live their life if you will people who claim you should only mod you are only allowed to mod for the love of it and there is something to be said for that sure there is something there that that people should mod for the love of it and you know what they still can you're not forced to pay ask money for mods if you want to do it for the love of it as so many people tell you to do and I also want to say I would love to see how many mods those people made that claim that other people need to do it for the love of it. I would love to see how many of those people actually made really proper mods themselves that they put a lot of time, effort and eventually also money into making. I would love to see those people. Because that's the thing right, you can easily point to someone else and say that they need to do it for the love of it and you have never walked a mile in their shoes. Right, you just want your free stuff. That's the thing, this entitlement and almost dictatorish way of telling other people what to do with their made product. If I make a... Why, why, don't, why don't you, or if you are one of those people, why don't you go tell all the game makers they should do it for the love of it? Sharing games, sharing entertainment should be done for the love of it. Why are you asking money for this movie? Do it for the love of it. Yeah, why is mods any different? Honestly. But even apart from that, you are so not relevant to anything with this argument. You are not the one who made the mod. Someone else made that. Someone else put their time in it. You don't have to download it. You don't have to buy it. But if that person feels that it deserves some money, that he, deser that he or she deserves something, some compensation for the amount of time, effort and work they put into it, they are allowed to do that. Who are you to tell them they are not? And again, if people strongly believe it should be done for the love of it, go right ahead. There are also people who in the real world think certain jobs should be done for the love of it. There are people who are, like take a, take that whole doctors, with, what is it, doctors without borders or something, that go to poor countries and basically volunteer to help people there because they feel like being able to medically help people should be something you do, uh, again, should be something you do from the bottom of your heart. Fantastic people, obviously, but then there are also doctors who drive around in Porsche who really do believe they deserve compensation for the work they put out. Are you going to, you know, are you going to egg their house and tell them that they should do it for the love of it? Do you do your job for the love of it? And then comes the whole argument, modding is not a job. No, it's not yet. That doesn't mean it doesn't, it can't be a job. This is like, actually, that's why this is so exciting. This is the first time modding could be perhaps perceived and seen and evolved into an actual job. We say the oldest profession in the world we know of is prostitution. That means that probably, unless you're a prostitute yourself, the job you have wasn't a job before. Computer, you know, IT tech support, yeah, that didn't exist before computers ex uh, ex existed, so let's say that's not a job. Modding could become a job. That is why this is so exciting. Maybe people can do this professionally. Professionally from their own chair, regardless of the, the game's management and the people who lead it there and all their um, you know, responsibilities towards the publisher, etc, etc. Someone completely loose from all of that could grab the groundwork that proper game developers make and make something completely different out of it. Based on that, but completely different and make money on that. How is that a bad thing? How can you even remotely see that as a bad thing? It could be extremely interesting. Now, people also mention that it's, it would be like paid DLC or whatever. Again, the mods are only there because a person decides to make it and charge for it. You are not, you don't have to buy it and it wouldn't be there if that person didn't make it. Why do you not? And I understand there's a problem with DLC. I understand there's a problem there where you can say, you know, vote with your wallet. Because uh, we do know of, of kind of skewed things where a developer is actually asked by their boss to remove content from the game to later be released as DLC. Or that we know the content is already on the disc and you simply unlock it when you buy the DLC. Sure. 
has a lot of stuff there that can be skewed and fucked up, but mods are not really related to that. And there is something to be said to sell a game on the basis that mods will fix it, obviously. But I don't feel like Skyrim is that. Maybe the previous Elder Scrolls games were so skewed you kind of need that. And I'm not saying unofficial patches don't fix a lot of things. But that that's more like the standards we keep developers to. That's, it's, it, it, that's a different type of argument. It's a different argument about being able to return games or products in general. Because you borderline down the line feel like the support is not there for it that's that's the the hard world about the hard thing about the digital world right you can always when you buy a car you expect it to be basically done you don't bring it you know you don't buy it with a slightly faulty engine and bring it back to the shop a month later to have it fixed but games are like that games can be brought out and people find issues and then a month down the road a patch comes out that fixes some of these issues it's a bit of a tricky world there, but to assume that everything goes to hell because people can now charge for their mods... Again, mass hysteria, ignorance, fear. That's your argumentation. Um, where was I going with this? So that's... that's one. So again, telling people what they should and should not uh, ask money for, or how it should be... Honestly, that's, it's no different than telling people... than telling two gay people not to be able... not you know, not to get married, or are forbidding gay people from getting married. You have nothing to freaking do with those people. Who are you to tell them not to get married? Let them get married. Who cares? It's, it, it, or who cares? I mean, of course, there's something there. You should care for these people. You should. Why? Are, who are you to tell them not to get married? Basically, with all the uh, benefits there as well. You know, government-like financial benefits, all that stuff. It's ridiculous. That you think you have the authority to tell someone else stuff like that if it doesn't hurt. I mean, of course, you should be able to tell certain people not to do certain things because it hurts other people. But, yeah. Um, and again, the whole thing is, if you think mods should be free, then why shouldn't games or anything else in the freaking world? Uh, so that's one thing. Then there's an argument, and this is more, this is more to the point of how it's implemented. The 25% thing versus the 75%. Basically, as it is, if you opt in, well, as it was, if you opt into uh, this whole paying for mod things with your mod, you would get 25% of the profits of what someone paid. On the other hand, you are allowed to tell to to yourself uh, decide what price you would ask. So you can kind of decide with that what this 25% would entail. You can kind of decide how much money you would make with that. But people do... Um, th th this is more of an argument as to accepting the idea of paid mods, but just not the implementation. So they, a lot of people claim that the 70, that the 25% is too little and that the 75% is a blatant cash grab. This is a very tricky thing. First of all, merely claiming that is obviously built based on ignorance. You don't know this. You assume that it is the way it is because they just want the maximum amount of money without uh, mothers thinking, well, this is ridiculous. So first of all, again, it's optional to opt in. If you think that 25% is, uh, is insultingly low, don't opt in and continue on making nothing. That's your choice. Second thing. The money, the 75% is divided between Steam and uh, Bethesda. Can the values be different? Can it be that the modder makes more than 25% and can it be and Bethesda and Steam a little bit less? Maybe. The thing is, we do not know that. You cannot simply say that that can easily be changed. What is the tricky thing here? Bethesda has to be in the loop of getting paid. Why? Because legally they can have a huge issue if they don't. It has all to do with who owns the rights or keeping the rights, exclusive rights, to an IP, an intellectual property. In this case, Skyrim, the Elder Scrolls series. If they would just allow modders to make money off that and don't take a cut themselves at all, that could seriously jeopardize their hold on that... Uh, on that um, 
IP and it might just be that a totally different party makes another Scrolls game and then a judge uh, t tells in court, yeah, well, you gave that away. I don't see why this would be an issue. And then they lose control of the IP. That is a serious issue that goes on in the gaming industry. Nintendo goes to court every damn single year to make sure they can keep a firm hold, exclusive hold, on their franchises, Mario, Zelda, and stuff. You as a consumer might assume that goes without saying it's their product, but it isn't. That's the thing. Legally, it's kind of tricky that Bethesda said yes to this, that other people make money off their product, loose from them. They have to be in the loop financially. And that is kind of why I... Um, why you should be hesitant to say that that 25% is bullshit. There might be some very strict legal reasons behind it. One thing that now occurs to me that I didn't mention yet, there's another issue with the system, the way it was implemented, apart from the theft and everything. There's another thing that I want to mention quickly. One thing that someone mentioned is a mother is hung out to dry when they opt into this system. Now that is of course very fucked up. Everyone who earns money off this product should be partially responsible for it. Uh, that immediately makes this whole paid for modding thing a lot more difficult. This would mean Bethesda and Steam would have to review every mod uh, before it is allowed to be paid for, but perhaps it has to be like that. The reason why what is so difficult is that a modder uh, said uh, on Reddit, kind of, he was one of the first who was contacted about potentially making money with their, with his mods um, he said that when it's mod when, when this whole thing was said and done and launched he kind of wanted to take the mod down to do something with it I, I'm not sure I don't know the exact details but I know after that he suddenly got basically almost threatened with lawsuits now let's not go with pitchforks to valve and, and steam etc yet but the thing is that's so difficult here is you make a mod that is entirely yours and you have a vision for it and but and you make promises but knowing that you don't owe anyone anything you know you kind of have your word and you kind of try to do things but you don't owe anyone anything when you start selling your mod people actually bought something and then it suddenly becomes a lot trickier you can't really take your mod down anymore and who determines what this mod was what content it had and where it should go from now right maybe you buy something just like early access maybe you, which is by the way also a mess but maybe you buy something on the merit that it will evolve in something but who's going to hold that modder accountable for actually finishing that mod maybe he gets the cash and goes away or maybe he doesn't have the time maybe something really happens in his real life that becomes uh, you know difficult who's responsible at that point you only get 24 hours to return your mod on the one thing you get 24 hours so you do have a lot a relative reasonable amount of time to check out the stuff you bought to see if it all works and if not to return it but 24 hours for certain mods is enough and for other mods is really really not enough and what if you encounter an issue down the road do you have can you i guess you can complain to the modder and the modder if he's good of heart might invest more time into fixing that if he's you know that also determines on how much this modder person himself is uh, him or herself is um fixated on keeping a good name maybe a modder you know maybe that person will uh pat, pat themselves on the back about being one with the community and fixing stuff just like certain game developers are or maybe it's too much work at that point maybe they're already working on a new mod who knows but that that's again that's tricky business who is responsible eventually for the mod if the modder is not allowed to take it down anymore how much content made the modder add to the mod how much things made it change and again with if issues arise who's responsible tricky thing again definitely something wrong with the with the implementation how steam did it so with that in mind i'm not against steam pulling it down now it kind of had to because of these loopholes but this is more in response again to the amount of people just spouting such nonsense. Um, there was more here. One second, I need to need to open something because I, I, honestly, I can't even I can't even comprehend what certain people say. Um, let's see. Uh, pe people stealing stuff off the Nexus and uploading it somewhere else. Yeah, of course, an issue. Um, 
Oh, there are also people who claim that this would be the death of PC gaming, which I'm not even going to address how weird and stupid and far far fetched that is. Um, some people think it's uh, some people. Uh, well, I saw a few people who mentioned that it's unfair towards the Nexus. The Nexus is one of the is perhaps the main alternative or perhaps the main source of mods for many people for mods for Skyrim and other Elder Scrolls games. And some people say that this is kind of unfairly putting them out of business. But as far as I'm concerned, the Nexus just hosts people their mods and and makes money themselves out of advertisement. And now some Steam can make money by actually selling the mods of the people it's a tricky thing, like, does the Nexus, I mean, yes, the, you know, I, I might sound harsh here, but has the ne Nexus perhaps not just served its purpose? Does it have, still have a right to exist then, right now? Apart from the flaws that Workshop has, and it has flaws, and the Nexus might be better in many ways, but if those, if that better stuff is applied to Steam Workshop, does the Nexus still have a point in existing? Perhaps not. Things change. Um... Also, perhaps the Nexus themselves can now could now also uh, contact Bethesda and, and you know about perhaps charging for mods, uh, about them also giving the ability to provide modders with uh, the ability to charging for mods. Who knows? Uh, they might be there. Um, uh, let's see, 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 see. Was there anything else? It's probably something else. Oh, donations, donations, yes. Here's something, okay. Donating, oh my god. All right, so a lot of people claim this is a horrible thing, putting things behind a paywall because you can do something like donations. Now, first of all, first of all, the whole paywall argument. Valve, Steam, only gives modders the option of opting in. Mods are not suddenly all just, again, you know, pay to play you don't there are plenty of models who decides who decide who won't decide to opt in for money um that's the thing it's not steam doesn't put it all behind a paywall the modder has the option to do that themselves steam merely gives models the option of doing that so that's first of all something incredibly skewed then let's talk donations some people feel it would be better to go for donations i can bet you that the people who claim this a, have barely ever donated anything in their life and just want to get this stuff as well for free and just hope other people donate or just assume, you know, there are good people in the world, they will donate. Let's talk about donations for a bit. Apart from the fact that many have, that a lot of modders have already shared their um, experience with donations in that it really doesn't work, they barely get anything. And don't get me wrong, I know from Twitch uh, streaming stuff that uh, certain people just are remarkably weirdly generous to some mediocre streamer, you know, giving them $20. I'm thinking to myself, $20, that's a lot of money, right, to just give to someone. But some people, you know, do have money to share. And But it's few and far between. And the one thing, apart from these modders actually sharing that uh, donations never amount to anything, one thing that we can all look at, but apart from looking honestly at ourselves and how much money we have donated to mods ever, because I can tell you this much, I have never donated anything to a mod. Um, one should look at the Humble Bundle. Alright, let's talk about the Humble Bundle for a bit. If you guys don't know what it is, the Humble Bundle is a initiative of an organization and... Um, sorry? <clears throat> a lot of uh, game developers can opt in their games in a Humble Bundle. A Humble Bundle is, I think, a monthly thing, and every month there's a new one that contains several games. You can buy these games and pay as much as you want. Pay as much as you see fit. Pay as much as you deem these games that are in the bundle right now worth. And, on top of that, you can also determine how your money is distributed when you pay it. You can, with sliders, you can decide how much money goes to the humble bundle makers, so for their website and for their support, how much money goes to the developers of the video game that are in that bundle at that moment, and how much money goes to charity. And the charity is, I forgot the name of it, but it's at least about giving, helping sick children, maybe terminally ill, you know, children with cancer, whatever, 
helping them uh, financially to the equipment to play some video games themselves. Charity, a good cause, right? Now, people can decide themselves what they pay. And what do you think the outcome of that is? Hmm? can tell you this much, this much, people with their whole donations is fine thing can shut the F up because 99.9% .9 humble bundle buyers, 99.9% .9 pays exactly the minimum required to get every game in the bundle. You see there is this slight minimum cap of like $5 but to get like everything. So I think it was like you have like four first games and you can get those for exactly what you want to pay like maybe even one cent and then there are like four extra games and for those you need to pay uh, at least five yeah 99% uh, 99.9 percent .9 pay exactly that five dollars and in fact it was so bad people are so bad that before this before they changed it already people were actually buying multiple humble bundles for the minimum just to have extra keys to trade for stuff they actually saw it as a commodity they actually made took advantage of the humble bundle in that way to trade and make money or, or not spend money themselves that's how people are and if you think that if people are not willing to pay anything anything not a cent extra for actual games in a humble bundle then how do you how many people do you think would donate to a mod because I can guarantee you that's nearly nobody and again the modders in their quotes in the in that came out for this actually yeah supported that very obvious idea so there's the thing allowing modders to get paid for mods is in principle an extremely exciting thing making modders mo modding potentially a job extremely exciting it can lead to a lot of good things the only thing wrong with it right now is the implementation and the only reason why so many people are crying is because they are entitled they don't want to pay anything and they have these completely skewed dictatorish <coughs> ways of telling other people what they should or should not do and I can tell you this much none of those people work for free and that's basically all I have to say about it right now it just pisses me off how many times I have to tell people this it's so ignorant it's so again that telling other people how to live their life if you will this this overlord mentality this complete I don't know I don't even have the words for it it's but it pisses me off now again right now it's not uh, it's no longer available steam took it down here's hoping from my part at least that they tweak it that they look at it tweak it see what they can do and then perhaps offer it back uh, in in a slightly different way perhaps but do offer modders once again the opportunity of making mods making money of their mods and again you don't have to pay for it let your wallet decide if you feel you're getting screwed over by the game developers and their DLC then don't buy it don't buy it it's as simple as that I can tell you this much actually without whispering I never buy DLC. I personally always wait, and actually, I because of DLC, DLC actually forces me to not buy any games when they come out. And in that way, developers have almost shot themselves in the foot as far as I'm concerned, uh, with me personally as a consumer. I love video games. I would buy a lot of video games, but I'm effectively not buying a whole bunch of them, purely on the merit that I know DLC will come out, and I'll just, and I know I want everything, so I'll just wait and wait and wait until it comes out with a game of the year edition and then usually I'm thinking at that point I'm thinking well it's been fucking I don't know been a year now might as well you know why would I not wait a little bit longer it's not like I actually need a product so I wait a bit longer until it actually comes on the deal and then buy it so I pay actually the absolute minimum and that's not really because I'm well it's partly because I'm greedy but it's also partly because the developers set it up the way they did like Assassin's Creed 3 I have all Assassin's Creed games up until, what is it, Revelations, and nothing afterwards, purely because um, the DLC and everything, and now I can buy three right now, It's uh, or, well, not right now, but on several Steam deals, it's been like 10 euros, I think, 12 maybe, with all the DLC, and I thought to myself, well, you know, there's no hurry to buy it now, so I'll wait, maybe next summer sale, it will be 750 with all the DLCs, then I'll buy it, but there are plenty of games I 
kind of want, but I just pass on because of the DLC. And you can do exactly the same, and if you feel a mod is not worth it, then don't buy it. It's all up to you, and the market will decide how things go. And maybe that's no, not all uh, uh, something you want. Maybe you personally think, well, I want to put in as little possible effort as possible. I'd rather spend money on some new shoes and my car, and that's fine. Choices have to be made, right? Yo, know, no one can buy everything, and sometimes you have to make a choice on what to buy, and. Sometimes you can't get everything for free. Again, video games are not free, most of them. Some of them are, you can play those. Anyway, now I'm drifting. Is that what I had to say? Hope the paid mod things come back in a better way. Um, I look forward to reading potential potential comments, but I, seeing as the other podcasts were never really uh, looked at, I doubt we will get much. But otherwise I'm expecting a lot of stupidity. But still feel free if you want to. Anyway, bye.